Welcome to The Fix List, a guide to improving your paintings by looking at other work in search of common visual problems. Today's problem are reference images. And I don't know where this rumor started, but beginners often believe that if you use reference, you are cheating. That is not true. The reason we use reference is because our brains want to simplify. If we were to draw an apple, it would come out looking like the icon of an apple, not a realistic apple, because we just can't remember all those details. And that's where photo reference comes in. So let's look at some examples from the control paint community. I think starting with a character is a great way to go because characters wear clothing and we wear clothing. But when I look at this character, even though I get the overall idea, I don't necessarily buy these original clothes. This vest is sort of like the impression of a vest or the memory of a vest. It doesn't look like a real vest you could go to the store and buy. Same goes for whatever it is he's wearing on his arm. I'm actually not quite sure what that is. Everything here has a vague approximation but lacks detail. So what I did to make my paint over was first to collect a page of reference. And this is about half of the design work, if I'm honest. I go to a variety of resources. It might be photojournalism, images from eBay, Google Image Search, the works. And what I have here is a collage of general ideas that I'm going to combine together in order to inform my character. It's like he's going online and shopping for actual clothes such that he'll look like a believable person. So even though I didn't make a very polished paint over here, I think it makes a big difference going from the original here, which is vague, to my version, which is still messy, but is more specific. And these real world details give it believable weight. So character and clothing might be obvious, but background art might not be obvious. Well, having seen a lot of beginner work, I can tell you backgrounds are a real opportunity to use reference. Because this here is taking up a big chunk of the image, but it doesn't really look like an actual mountain. It looks like somebody's memory or impression of a mountain, and I think it kind of robs the coolness of this tower. Here is my paint over, and you can see I've left the tower pretty much alone. I've really only changed this mountain range. And the mountain range is really not all that detailed. What it is, though, is specific. So here's the reference photo that I used. I didn't make a collage in this case. It was just a single mountain that I thought would do the job. And what I looked at here was the shape of the silhouette and the shape of the erosion and the shape of the snow piles. And that's what I put into my image. I have the same sort of ridge line, a simplified but still similar version of this erosion and snow. And that makes a big difference. You'll notice that the reference image is not the same time of day. It's not the same color palette. It wouldn't fit in if I just slapped it into the image, but that doesn't matter. Each reference image gives me some useful information and a lot of useless information. What you're learning is how to look for the right reference images that tell you little bits of the puzzle, and then you extrapolate and put that information back into your image. Before, after. This artist here has obviously used reference for a real subway tunnel, but you can use reference images to fix individual aspects of the painting. And in this case, I think the painting needed a lighting makeover because right now it's feeling a little bit noisy and flat. So what I did was I gathered reference of the same tunnel, but I only looked at the lighting. And then based on that new information, the paint over I made looks like this. Obviously I did not do a very clean paint over, but I really just focused on how could I keep everything intact and just change the lighting a little bit to make the space feel more believable. And I didn't look at just any lighting. I looked at the lighting from actual subway tunnels. And I think that's the secret of using reference material is that you're trying to answer very specific targeted questions about your painting. Here's before, here's after. Here's a design that I think is really effective for a lot of reasons, but what jumped out at me is that this is not a big boat, or at least that's not what the details are telling me. Based on this scale reference, it should be a huge boat. This could maybe fit 100 people comfortably. But when I look at the hull and the centerboard here, these are details of a smaller boat. Now, I'm not blaming the artist for not knowing about boats. What I am blaming them for is not looking at reference photos. Here I collected a sheet of model boats. And no, these are not actual real boats. They're small scale. But what I knew about these model boats is that they would have photos of underneath the hull. And when it comes to real boats, most of the time they have their hull underwater. 
And what I needed was that underside view. So I used that reference, I looked at the specific details, and then I came back to the painting, and here's my paint over. So you can see the entire composition is largely unchanged. I did change the silhouette a little bit. I added this um, kind of rear area here. I changed the shape of the keel, but mainly I was adding smaller details, little planks, little cannon holes, and all of this adds up to give a better sense of scale. Another major area I changed was the color of the sails. Now, if we look here, the sails are very dark in these shadow areas, the same as the hull. What this looks like to me is that it's uh, opaque material. It's almost like the hull is made from wood and the sails are made from the same wood. My guess is that's not what the artist was going for. If we were looking up at a boat and there was sun in the sky, light would be coming straight through those sails and they'd be much more translucent. So in my paint over, I included that as well. But mainly, I just looked at details in my photo reference and then applied that new knowledge to the image. Before, after. So let's finish things off with one of my paintings. This here was a SketchUp model that served essentially as a loose thumbnail. It established the scene, it established the values, but as you can see, none of the details are very realistic. So one other thing you can do with photo reference is to actually use the photographic details in the work itself. So here's before and here's after. Clearly this looks a lot more realistic. There are textural details that indicate the scale. It looks like a real castle. So I've not changed the composition, I've really just increased the believability of the image. Now to get to a place like this, it definitely requires a certain understanding of just the basics of painting. I also began by creating a perspective grid because these are the photos I collected and none of them are the right time of day or the right angle. So I knew I needed to do quite a bit of modification. In broad strokes, what this process looks like for me is starting with this perspective grid and then extracting building blocks from the photos and removing all the perspective from them. And this gives me essentially Legos that I can then bring back into my image and skew into place. So I take these Lego pieces, bring them back in here with the perspective set up, and this is the end result. Obviously I did paint over some lighting and I changed some details, but this is a case where I am actually using the photographic details themselves right in the painting. Now were I to do this in a normal painting, I'd probably have a stronger underpainting first and use the photographic details as overlays. But as you can see, this is a very obvious example of something becoming much more realistic simply by adding photo reference details. But really, no matter what you're painting, reference is always helpful. And I want to thank the brave audience members that sent in their art to help with this project. It's not easy to get your work critiqued, so thanks for the help. See you in the next video.